All right, everyone. So looking at the canvas piece from the last episode, we have these nice little mini particle explosions flying up into the air, but we are not done just yet. Let's go back to the canvas piece. You'll see looking at this, we have a nice mountain range in the background. Our background color is actually some sort of gradient. We have these stars that are randomly generated throughout the whole background as well. And then we're generating these multiple stars along the, from the sky that hit the bottom of the floor and explode in the millions of pieces. So what do we have left? We need to create these mountain ranges. We need to create these background stars. And we also need to create multiple stars falling from the sky. And also this ground thing right here. We don't want to forget about that little chunk ground all right but let's start off with creating these mountain ranges actually uh no i take that back let's start off with creating this background gradient then we'll go to the mountain ranges then the stars and then finally we'll do all of these stars falling uh, at random values being created randomly and then hitting the bottom of the floor Okay, so how do we go about creating a background gradient for our canvas piece? Well, the first thing we're going to need to do is create a background gradient object. So to create a background gradient object, we're going to stick within this implementation section right here. And we are going to create a constant because this object is never going to change once we create it. We are going to create this constant and call it background gradient. And this is going to be equal to our context, which is equal to C. And using our context, we can use a create linear gradient method like so. And this takes four arguments. The first two arguments are going to be X and Y coordinates of where this gradient should begin. So if we're going to specify this gradient should begin at coordinates of 0, 0, they're going to start, this gradient is going to start at the top left hand side of our canvas. And then the second two arguments are going to be where should this gradient end? And if we specify a coordinate of zero for X and a coordinate of canvas height for Y, this means that our gradient is going to go from top to bottom of our canvas. Cool. So this will go ahead and set our background gradient to uh, some sort of linear gradient. But now we need to specify what colors should we include within this background gradient. So to specify what colors we should include, what we're going to do is we're going to say, take our background gradient and add color stop. And add color stop specifies where within this gradient should we begin a color and where within a gradient should we end and what kind of color should we end with. So this takes two arguments. The first argument is going to be where in this kind of a gradient canvas that we just created should we start and what color should we start it with. So we're going to start at zero, which just means we're going to start at the very top. And then the color we're going to use, it's going to be a dark blue. And I already have this readily available. So the hex code is going to be hashtag 171E26. And this is going to make sure at the very start of our uh, very start of our gradient that we're going to have this nice dark blue color. But now we need to add another color stop to specify what kind of color should we have at the very end of our gradient, where our x coordinate is equal to zero and our y coordinate is equal to canvas height. So this is going to be equal to one. These uh, this first argument it's a value of zero to one and it specifies where on this canvas should we create this color. And this one specifies that this color should go at the very end of the gradient. So this color is going to be 3F586B, and this is going to be a bit of a lighter blue. So if you save this, nothing's going to happen just yet because we are creating this gradient object and storing it within a constant, but we're not actually assigning it to anything, which is what we need to do next. So instead of using a clear rect within our animate loop, that'll go ahead and get rid of everything with a white rectangle, we are going to use a fill rect instead. So just go ahead and get rid of clear rect, replace it with fill rect, let's watch what happens. We're just going to get a blue background or a red background because this right here, fill rect, will take whatever color we specify as a fill style. So if we say C, that fill style is equal to not red, not blue, but our background gradient right here instead. Just reference the constant directly and save that. You're going to see we get this really nice background gradient in return. Okay, so that's how we create the first piece of this whole background. We have the background color, but now we need to create the actual mountain ranges that you see right here. 
So these mountain ranges, let's go ahead and look at it. These mountain ranges are actually just triangles that we create with line two functions. So literally we're just going to start over here, create a line to the right hand side of the screen, create a line to the middle of the screen a little bit higher up, and then complete the shape by heading back to where we started with our original line. Then we're just going to fill that shape in and that's how we create these background mountains. But we can be a little efficient with the creation of these mountains. If we use a function, we can generate these mountains dynamically so that they're automatically placed and created in the right positions. We can determine how many mountains do we want within a range. And we can also make sure that these mountains are dynamic so that when we move our canvas up and down, that the mountains are resized with the canvas. So let's go ahead and get started on drawing. Let's go ahead and get started on drawing the big mountain first. That's going to be the most important one. So to draw this, we are going to be creating a new function. And we can go ahead and put this right beneath our mini star update function. And this function is going to be called create mountain range because that's what it's going to do. So this create mountain range function is going to take a few arguments. Once we run create mountain range, we should see a whole range of mountains created across our canvas determined on how many we want, how many actual mountains within this range that we want to create. So the first actual argument for this create mountain range function is going to be mountain amount. And this is going to determine how many mountains should we have with our mountain range. Then we're going to have a height argument. This is going to determine how high these mountains should be when we create them. And then finally, each individual mountain should have its own color. So we're going to add a color argument here as well. Okay, so we have the arguments for actual function, but now we need to, within this function, we need to create the code that'll actually draw these mountains in place. So since we're going to have multiple mountains, we're going to want to use a for loop which references this mountain amount. And you're going to see why later on this is important and why we're using this for loop to create this range. Um, but within this for loop, we need to start drawing a triangle based on the mountain amount, based on the height, and based on the colors that are passed through this function. So what we can do is we can say C dot begin path. And then we're going to move to we're going to move to the bottom left hand side of our canvas. So we can say, go ahead and get zero. And then our X or our Y coordinate is going to be canvas dot height. So we're starting right over here, but now we need to draw a line to the right hand side of the canvas. So to draw a line, we can say C dot line two. And then we want to specify the line two is going to go to canvas width and also canvas height. And that's going to draw a line all the way over here. But we're not done just yet. Now we need to draw a line somewhere up here determined by our actual height that we pass through this mountain range function. So what we're going to do is we're going to say c.line2. This should be in the middle of our canvas. So we can reference our canvas's width divided by 2. That'll go ahead and put it right here. But now we need to make sure that it's put up here based on the height that we're passing through. All right, so since our coordinate system for the Y, it starts at zero and it increments in value as you go downwards. So this is something like 800 pixels. If we're to pass through a height of 100 pixels, meaning that the mountain should only be up here from the bottom of the screen. Well, line two is actually going to draw a line to the very top of the canvas because that's where our coordinate system starts. We go from zero to 800, so 100 is actually up here. But when we want our height of the mountain to be 100, uh, we really want it to be right here. So to fix this coordinate system, to kind of reverse the coordinate system, what we want to do is we want to take our canvas's height so entire height of the canvas, and then we're going to subtract the height that we passed through. So let's say we pass through a height of 100. We're going down here, we're subtracting that height, so 100. And if we subtract that height, the actual value here is going to be 700, which will make sure that our mountain is actually 100 pixels tall. So just a little thing to take into account when creating a function that makes sense. Okay, so now that we have a line to the center, the center of our canvas right here at about 100 pixels, that's just the value we've been using, we need to go ahead and complete what we have right here. So we're going to create a line to our original position, which is zero canvas height. So we need to specify 
line to instead of move to. And then we are going to say c.fillStyle. This is going to be equal to the color that we passed through our argument. And this is going to be equal to the color that we passed through our function. And then finally, we want to fill the shape in and then we want to close our path. Okay, cool. So this is going to be the function. Now that we've created the function that creates some sort of triangle, we now need to actually call it. So if we go ahead and copy this, head on down to our animate loop right beneath fill rect, we are going to say create a mountain range with one mountain. The height of this should be 100 as we were talking about. And let's just go ahead and make this mountain white for the time being and see what we get. And now we have a nice white triangle in the center of our canvas, but we do have a JavaScript error. Errors happen. I accidentally spelled close path incorrectly. Close pot is not what we want. So let's go ahead and close this out to be correct with close path. And now we have that nice triangle as I was talking about. But the thing is, this isn't really dynamic just yet based on the mountain amount that we pass through this. If we're to go ahead and create another mountain range, but with two mountains within the range and make this, let's say green, we're literally not doing anything to create two mountains within the mountain range. So we need to go back up here and make use of this for loop that I put in early on so that we're creating two mountains instead of just one mountain. So we're going to be messing with the early values of move to and line to, mainly the width values. So here's what we're going to do to create multiple mountains within this mountain range. We're going to make use of i heavily, which is basically the number, uh, the iteration of the loop that we're running through based on the mountain amount. So instead of moving to zero, we are going to move to i. And then instead of a line to canvas width, what we want to do is we want to create a constant right up here. And this constant we can call mountain width. So this is going to be the actual width of the mountain. Right now this is a full canvas width, but if we have two mountains within our mountain range, uh, the actual width of a mountain should be half of the canvas width. So to get the, to get the actual width of each individual mountain automatically, we can say canvas width divided by mountain amount. So now if we specify we want two mountains, we're literally just dividing canvas width in half, and that means each individual mountain is going to be half the width of the canvas, and so forth as we keep on adding more and more mountains. So now that we're referencing mountain width, we want to go ahead and say move to i times mountain width. Instead of a line to canvas width, we're going to say i times mountain width plus mountain width. And then a line two is going to be the exact same thing. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and take this, copy it, replace canvas width with what we just copied. It's still going to be divided by two because we need to make sure that this is in the middle of each individual mountain. And then finally, our last one is going to be, instead of a line two zero, we're going to say line two i times mountain width. Mountain width, okay, cool. Now let's watch what happens. Once we do this, you'll see that we have two mountains created instead of one. And I know I didn't explain that well, so let's go ahead and loop through this just as if the code was being ran. So, okay, we're focusing on the green mountains. We pass through a mountain amount of two and a height of 100. So on the first iteration, we know that we have two mountains. So our mountain width is always going to be half the size of the canvas, which is the exact size of one of these green mountains. We begin a path and then we move to i times mountain width. So mountain width is about, let's say 300 pixels. If we multiply that by zero, we're starting right over here. We create a line to i times mountain width, that's going to be zero, plus mountain width, which is about 300 pixels. So we're creating a line to the middle of the screen. Finally, we wanna create another line to the middle of the mountain width that we just created. So what we're doing is we're multiplying zero by the original mountain width. That's going to be right over here. But at the same time, we're adding on our mountain width, which is right here and dividing that by two. So we effectively get within the middle of this mountain. And then we're adding canvas height minus actual height that we specified right here. And that's what's creating this whole multiple mountain effect. 
Finally, we close things off by referencing our original value, which is going to be this point right here. And that's kind of how we're getting this whole thing. If we run through the loop again, and you put in uh, i as one, you're basically just starting everything from the center of the screen rather than over here. And that's what's creating this next screen triangle next to the one on the left. So hopefully that makes a little sense. I realize it's a more kind of complicated way to create mountain ranges, but at the same time, it's going to be a much more effective and easier way to create them in the process. So now that we have this function, what we can do is we can create mountain ranges that we see right over here. We just have to create and plug in the correct values. So we have three individual mountain ranges in the canvas piece. So we can just go ahead and copy and paste this line. And the, mount, the, the last mountain range actually has three mountains within it instead of two. So we need to specify that we're going to have three mountains here. And then let's go ahead and specify the height of these mountains. So the one right here, this is pretty high up. Uh, this one's a little further down from this one. And then these ones are pretty low to the ground. So we're going to want to specify that our one mountain, the big one, is going to be equal to our canvas's height minus 50. And our canvas height minus 50 is going to be right up here. So we're going to have one big mountain. And the color for this I have saved. It's going to be hashtag 384551. And then for our next mountain range, it's a little bit lower. So what we can do is we can say canvas height minus one, let's do 100. And then the color for this is going to be pound 2B3843. And then for our last one, we're going to specify our canvas's height minus 300. And we're using canvas's height because that's what's going to give it that, uh, that dynamic effect as we resize our browser. And finally, this should be equal to 26333E. And if we save that, you're going to see we get mountain ranges in the background. And these ones are pretty steep. They're not exactly what you see here because the function for these is a little different. If we inspect the actual function that we're using right here, you're going to notice that we're actually adding on 325 to the width of the mountains and we're subtracting 325 from the myth of width of the mountains, not the myth of the mountain, although that sounds pretty damn cool. We're subtracting 325 from the width of the mountains to kind of even things out and not make things as steep as you see right here. So you can really go ahead and play around with this based on um, how wide or how tall you want these mountains. But if we're to replicate things exactly, let's just go ahead and add 325 onto this line two right here and then for our last line two we're going to subtract 325 and that's going to even things out a bit for us okay cool that's looking pretty darn good uh, now that we have our mountain ranges in place we have our background let's go ahead and create these background stars so a background star we pretty much already have a blueprint for a star if you think about it we just need to create these stars and not not update them but we need to just draw them so they're always in place um, but we're not actually updating any values because they're going to be staying in the exact same location we have them so we don't need to create any new object we can literally just reference this main star object that we created in the beginning right here but since these stars are going to be functioning differently from our main stars and our mini stars, we're going to want to create a new variable called background stars. And we are going to store an array within this variable. Um, and this is just a way that we can manage these background stars separately. All of our mini background stars are going to be going into this background stars array. So now that we have a background stars array, let's go ahead and push some of our um, background stars into this. So what we can say is, Let's go ahead and run this 150 times. So we're going to be pushing 150 background stars into our background star array. Reference our background stars, and then we're going to push. And remember, we're referencing our main star object. So we're going to say star, new star. And a star takes, let's go ahead and reference it, an x and y coordinate, a radius, and a color. So let's see, uh, since uh, since we want random locations for these stars, let's go ahead and create a constant right up here. So our constant is going to be x, and then this is going to be equal to any place math.random, 
any place along the canvas's width. So any place from here to here. Each time we run this loop, each time we run through this loop, we're going to be assigning a random value to this x coordinate, which we're going to push through into a new star. And we can do the exact same thing for our y coordinate, but instead of any place along canvas's width, we're going to say any place along canvas's height. So we're going to want to push that in as well. And then finally, we want a random radius for these as well. So we'll say a constant of radius. And rather than give it a radius anywhere from zero to canvas height, those would be some massive freaking stars. We're going to say any radius from zero to three. Put in our radius, make sure that you add a comma to the end of y. And then finally, the color of these is probably going to be white. I think stars are white, if I, uh, maybe. <laughs> But yeah, okay, so we just pushed in 150 stars into our background stars array. They're all there, but remember, we need to call the draw function on them. We're not going to be calling the update function. If we call the update function, they're all going to go to the bottom of the screen, explode, and create tons of lag probably. But if we just call draw, they're just going to stay in place. Nothing's going to update. So that's what we're going to do. And to call the draw function, we're going to head on down to animate and say, for our background stars array, for each background star within it, call that background stars draw function, not the update function. And now we have stars being randomly generated on the top of our screen. But the problem is, obviously, they're being drawn on top of our mountains. And we want these to be drawn in the back of the mountains. So all we have to do is make sure that when we create a mountain range, when we're actually drawing these mountain ranges right here, that we're drawing them after our background stars. But that might introduce a little bit more of a problem. Now our main star in the back is falling beneath the mountains and we can't actually see anything. So just a little bit more, a little bit more of a rearrangement thing. So we just want to take these two right here, our big stars and our mini stars, and place them after the mountain range. So this is just being drawn in sequential order. And once we do that, we have the effect that we're going for. Okay, cool. Now before we actually get to the multiple stars falling from the sky, going in each which direction, exploding dynamically, all that cool good stuff, let's go ahead and touch this up just a little more. Let's go ahead and give these accurate colors, accurate glows to what you see in the actual canvas piece. So first thing first, if we refresh the page, you'll notice our main star is blue. That's not that's not a good color for a star. I mean, maybe it is, maybe you think so, but to actually reenact what we see within the canvas piece, we're going to want to change the color of this. And the color code for this is going to be, let's go ahead up to our main star, see where we're using blue. I'm just going to do a find. Okay, so we're pushing one star into our stars array and it's blue. Instead of referencing blue, our color code is going to be E3EAEF. And once we do that, we should see a white star, which is perfect, exactly what we want. We want to do the same thing for our mini stars, so the red stars. So we can find red, 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 where you at? Okay, we're using RGBA values, remember, so finding red is not going to work. Um, but let's go ahead and scroll up and see where we want to go, okay. So when we draw a mini star, we're including its fill style to be red. We wanna make sure that we change this to the same white color that we just put in for our larger stars. So the hex code for that is going to be two, two, seven, two, three, four. And then finally, two, three, nine. And if we save this, we have mini stars bouncing in each which direction. Pretty freaking cool, all right. So, almost there. We want to add a nice glow effect to these as well. So to add a glow effect, we're just going to go down to our draw function. We're already in the draw function for the mini star, so let's go ahead and add the glow effect to the mini stars first. So right beneath our fill style, we are going to specify a shadow color. And our shadow color is going to be equal to that same hex value as before. It's going to be equal to E3, E, A, E, F. Now we have a shadow color, but now we need to specify a shadow blur. So how many pixels outwards should we see this shadow? And we should say c.shadowblur is equal to 20. And with that, we now have some nice blur effect going on within each individual mini star. But the issue is, 
you can probably tell our mountains are now glowing as well. And you might want to keep that. I don't know. It's a pretty cool effect to me. But to replicate what we have over in the main piece, let's go ahead and make sure that this uh, <laughs> these background mountains aren't glowing in the back. So in order to make sure this isn't happening, what we need to do is we need to call a c.say function within our draw. And then at the very end, we need to call c.restore. And this just makes sure that this shadow color and blur is only affecting this piece of code inside of save and restore. So we save that. We should only have our mini particles glowing, which we do and no more background glow, which is perfect. But we're not done, almost there, almost there. Let's go ahead and make the glow effect happen for our main star as well. So we already know what our shadow color and blur should be, so we can just copy this right here, head on up to our draw function. Remember, right beneath fill style, we'll wanna paste this. And we also wanna include that c.save and c.restore, just so our other fill styles don't get affected by these blur effects. And then we should see a nice glow for our main star as well, which we do. And it also glows the background stars in the process. So we have some really freaking cool effects going on. We have the glowing and it's starting to look pretty darn close to what we see over here. The gravity is probably pretty high over here and <laughs> compared to what we see right here. Um, but that's not a problem. We can play with the gravity. You guys can toy around with things uh, however you want to make it. But yeah, um, I'm going to close things off for this episode. Uh, grab me some water for my voice. I... I have trouble talking for a long time, but um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed and next episode we'll finish this piece off. I'm excited. I hope you guys are. We're going to be creating these stars falling from the sky, random directions, random timings and everything. It's going to be awesome and you're going to come out with a freaking cool canvas piece in the very end. So thanks guys. Hope you enjoyed. Like this video, subscribe if you can, and I'll see you in the next video.